Ilhan Omar is one of the few lawmakers in Congress who's actually fighting for the American people. She's advocating for policies that we all overwhelmingly support, like Medicare for All. However, because she is a Muslim woman of color, it's not like she could just get to Congress and then advocate for these issues on a daily basis. She also has to simultaneously put up with vitriol and hate. And an example of that was put out on display at a public event sponsored by West Virginia's Republican Party at the state's capitol, where a poster stated this about Ilhan Omar, quote, Never forget, you said. I am proof you have forgotten. And the overt implication here is that since Ilhan Omar is a Muslim, she's therefore culpable either directly or indirectly for the 9-11 terrorist attack. It is a disgusting poster, it's brazenly Islamophobic, and at this point, there's still a lot of confusion about that particular poster and who put it up. One individual who worked at the um, state legislature resigned but claims somebody from the public brought it in since it was a public event. I don't know. The details are still a little bit um, fuzzy. But the point is that this is what Ilhan Omar has to deal with. If I were elected to Congress, I would be able to just fight for Medicare for all. I wouldn't have to put up with that much bullshit. But because she's a Muslim woman of color... She has to deal with these things that impede her ability to actually do things that would help the American people. It's an obstacle that is specifically hurting her chances of being more effective. And she responded to this poster saying, No wonder why I am on the hit list of a domestic terrorist and assassinate Ilhan Omar is written on my local gas stations. Look no further than the GOP's anti-Muslim display likening me to a terrorist rocks in state capitals and no one is condemning them. And she also shared a picture with the words assassinate Ilhan Omar demonstrating proof that, you know, the situation really is as bad as she's saying it is. And you don't even have to look very far to see how bad it is, because just under this very tweet were a bunch of Islamophobic attacks saying, you know, you're not American. Somebody accused her of being anti-American, or un-American rather, and used the hashtag war. Another conservative dingbat questioned whether or not the hate she's receiving is due to her supposed hate speech against APEC. And that both sides approach to, oh, well, maybe it's kind of deserved because you said something bad about APEC is something that you'd expect from just conservatives who are trying to troll, not from other lawmakers. However, that's kind of what we got. So, for example, this is what lawmaker Nita Lowy tweeted out. Gross Islamophobic stereotypes like those about Ilhan Omar recently featured on posters in West Virginia are offensive and have no place in political discourse. Anti-Semitic tropes that accuse Jews of dual lo loyalty are equally painful and must also be roundly condemned. So they're trying to both sides this, at least Nita Lowy is. She can't just say this Islamophobic poster is disgusting. She has to both sides it and bring up supposed anti-Semitic comments that Ilhan Omar made again. But understand, you're not coming to her defense here, Nita. You're not a hero. Because what you're doing is you are tacitly endorsing the idea that hatred against her is justified by saying this. Because what she's referring to is another supposedly anti-Semitic comment that Ilhan Omar made that actually isn't anti-Semitic when you have the context. So as NBC News reports, speaking Wednesday night at a forum at a Washington, D.C. bookstore with fellow freshman representative Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, the Minnesota Democrat said she fears everything they say about Israel is construed as anti-Semitic because they're Muslim. She said that prevents a broader debate about Israel's treatment of Palestinians. Some Jewish leaders said she then revived an old trope about divided loyalties among Jewish Americans when she said, quote, I want to talk about the political influence in this country that says it is okay for people to push for allegiance to a foreign country. She added, quote, I want to ask, why is it okay for me to talk about the influence of the National Rifle Association or fossil fuel industries or Big Pharma and not talk about a powerful lobbying group that is influencing policy? Now, what she's essentially saying here is, look, me as a congressperson, I'm expected 
to not be critical of Israel. I'm supposed to shut up shut up when it comes to issues related to Israel-Palestine. If I speak out on behalf of Palestinians and Israel's human rights abuses, well, then I'm anti-Semitic. If I talk about the lobbying influence of APAC, then apparently that's anti-Semitic. So what she's saying here is that we can't actually have a reasonable debate if we're not allowed to criticize Israel. And she even clarified this in response to Nita saying, quote, our democracy is built on debate, Congresswoman. I should not be expected to have allegiance slash pledge support to a foreign country in order to serve my country in Congress or serve on committee. The people of the fifth elected me to serve their interest. I am sure we agree on that. I have not mischaracterized our relationship with Israel. I have questioned it and that has been clear from my end. I am told every day that I am anti-American if I am not pro-Israel. I find that to be problematic and I am not alone. I just happen to be willing to speak up on it and open myself to attacks. My Americanness is questioned by the president and the GOP on a daily basis, yet my colleagues remain silent. I know what it means to be American and no one will ever tell me otherwise. I am in the Horn of Africa this weekend, proud to see peace prosper here and to be part of the first American delegation to Eritrea in decades is one I am grateful for. I fight peace and justice because only those who experience the pain of war know the joy of peace. Being opposed to Netanyahu and the occupation is not the same as being anti-Semitic. I am grateful to the many Jewish allies who have spoken out and said the same. We must be willing to combat hate of all kinds while also calling out oppression of all kinds. I will do my best to live up to that. I hope my colleagues will join me in doing the same. So I don't think she can possibly be more clear here. She's condemning anti-Semitism in all forms, but simultaneously she's saying, look, I care about human rights. I care that the Israeli government, not the Jewish people, but the Israeli government itself is oppressing the rights of Palestinians and treating them as third-class citizens. And that's unacceptable. That's what she's getting at here. But what do they do to try to dismiss her and shut down debate? They call her anti-Semitic. Now, you'd think that after seeing the harassment she received, seeing the poster linking her to the 9-11 terrorist attack, her colleagues in the House, especially Democrats, would be extra cautious in speaking about this issue and not trying to condemn her because anything can possibly be seen as fanning the flames of hate against Ilhan Omar. But did they do that? No. In fact, they were especially harsh against her this time around, even more so than last time, because you had Representative Juan Vargas calling her comments anti-Semitic and saying it's unacceptable to even question our country's relationship with Israel. He also called on her to apologize. You have Debbie Wasserman Schultz, a serial election meddler, trying to both sides the situation in the same way that Nita Lowy did. And collectively, you now have House Democrats taking action against her because of this. And as Politico reports, Speaker Nancy Pelosi and top Democrats will take floor action Wednesday in response to controversial remarks by Representative Ilhan Omar about Israel, the second such rebuke of the freshman Democrat from party leaders in recent weeks. A resolution on the floor, regardless of whether it specifically mentions Omar, would be a rare public reprimand from House speakers, particularly against a member of their own party, and speaks to the seriousness with which Democratic leaders view the ongoing controversy. So the takeaway here is that criticism of Israel is just simply not allowed. You are not allowed to criticize the Israeli government and the crimes that they commit against the Palestinian people unless you want to be labeled as someone who is anti-Semitic. That's the takeaway here. Ilan Omar is being silenced by Democrats who were just celebrating her electoral success in November. They were saying, we're so excited to have a Muslim woman of color representative in Congress because your voice matters. We need your voice because it's lacking. People like you don't have representation. Well, what happens? She gets to Congress, speaks out, and then everyone tells her to shut up. It's disgusting. So understand, Democrats are jumping on this bandwagon specifically because they don't want to offend one of their biggest donors. APAC. That's what this is about. It's not about whether or not they care about anti-Semitism. They don't care about that. They care about getting that money from APEC, which is not a representative of the average Jewish American or Jewish person. It's an organization that lobbies on behalf 
of the Israeli government and their geopolitical dominance in the Middle East and North Africa, and it isn't bankrolled by Jewish people at large, it's also funded by American oligarchs and evangelicals. So to say that APAC is a synonym for Jewish person is deeply offensive. As Katie Halper says, it's a trope in and of itself, but that's what they're using to shut down debate with regard to this issue. So there's just absolutely no room for nuance here. You can't have a thorough discussion here, a genuine debate about ideas. It's all a dogpile on Ilhan Omar to tell her to shut up. And what Democrats don't realize is the same individuals, the fake feminists like Nancy Pelosi who claim to care about women, what they're doing here with this resolution to condemn Ilhan Omar is paving the way for and legitimizing attacks like this. I'm going to say it. She is filth. She has no place in the Congress. She has no place on the Foreign Affairs Committee. It's outrageous that Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, the most powerful Democrat in America, appears on Rolling Stone hand in hand with her smiling this week. It's outrageous. That was Donald Trump's campaign advisor calling one of the first Muslim women elected to Congress filth. Not even hiding their racism. And this is the exact types of attacks that Democrats who are dogpiling on Ilhan Omar rather than defending her against harassment and hate are currently legitimizing. So they should all be coming to her defense after seeing what she has to put up with the harassment and whatnot, but because she threatens the status quo by having a conversation about a topic that has previously been taboo, well, they don't even care how it looks. They want to get her to shut up. Sorry, we don't care if you've been harassed and if you have death threats written on the gas stations in your district. We just want you to shut up and not talk about this issue because it's inconvenient for us and it may offend one of our biggest donors. It's absolutely despicable and I just want Ilhan Omar to know that real progressives, we actually do stand with you and we appreciate everything that you're doing because you're not just fighting for American people, but you're having to put up with something that few lawmakers have had to dealt, deal with you know, in American history and... Um, it's it's heartbreaking. It really is heartbreaking. I truly feel for her and she she's got to be protected at all costs because I worry about her safety and I worry that Democrats don't even care that they're fanning the flames at this point. Disgusting.